we are joined by James Corbett. So, hello, James. Thanks for joining us. Hey, let's do it. Why do you think there's such a huge backlash against the guy who essentially has done what journalists have always done, which is blowing the whistle on something he thought was wrong? Who are the people whose interests are, are hurt in this situation? It is the, the, the power establishment. It, are the, it, it is the people who want to be able to keep this secret. And, of course, their take on it is that this endangers the security of Americans, etc., etc. But uh, I don't think that that uh, lie is worth the paper that it's printed in. Basically, what this is is, is just the, uh, the, the establishment trying to preserve its secrets at any cost. And anyone who fundamentally bucks against that is going to receive some backlash. Um, regarding Snowden giving his uh, his information about the NSA spying to the Chinese and the Russians, I, I tend to believe him when he says he didn't do that, but I think we'd also be naive to think that he got out of Hong Kong without the Chinese getting that information one way or another. Uh, whether he gave it to them or whether it was simply acquired, I think everyone understands it was probably taken in some form. You have a fascinating interview with Russ Tice on your YouTube channel. Maybe you could kind of summarize what you found out from Russ Tice. Russ Tice was one of the original NSA whistleblowers. In fact, as far as I know, the first NSA whistleblower to come forward by name. He was the, one of the sources for the New York Times' original story back in 2005 that broke the uh, warrantless wiretapping scandal. Basically, he is now naming names, uh, saying that uh, when he was working for the NSA about 10 years ago, he physically held in his hand the wiretap orders for some of the highest ranking politicians in the United States. He ranking members of the congressional uh, leadership, both Democratic and Republican. Every single one of the Supreme Court justices, the former Secretary of State, Colin Powell, uh, and even a little known senator from Illinois at the time that was a, a a political nobody at the time, but who is now the president of the United States, Barack Obama, was specifically targeted for wiretapping back in 2004. So some pretty um, remarkable uh, revelations there. It's a big deal. That's a huge, huge story. It is actually being suppressed. Uh, Russ Tice, after Edward Snowden came out, he had uh, lined up four different on-camera interviews with national television networks in the United States all four of them canceled before he ever got on air. So uh, so this is definitely an, uh, something that's too hot to handle. Um, it's interesting that Snowden is getting 24-7 blanket coverage with the PRISM, and uh, Russ Tice is uh, trying to bring new information, and no one is touching it. So I think this information is just too hot to handle. What's your take on uh, the NSA's ability to dish the dirt on people and kind of hold people uh, to ransom. Knowledge is power specifically in cases where you can have dirt on someone that they don't want to, to get out there. So it's a really, really disturbing thing to think that there are people with, uh, with goods, with details ab about uh, some of these politicians that, uh, that can really control what they do politically. James Hayden is asking here, isn't Snowden a smokescreen to bury major news from the Middle East? Well, I think there are three ways of looking at this story. And one is that we can just take it at face value, that here's someone who's coming out with some information and it's causing big political waves. The other one is that this is a limited hangout. So basically that idea is that Snowden is coming out with information, whether he himself is doing this or whether he's a dupe for someone behind the scenes, but he's coming out with information that is just a little bit of the picture, just just a few of the details, but not the big picture, so that we can f fixate on those few small details and miss the bigger picture, like, for example, what Russ Tice is saying. And then there's the third possibility, which is that this is just a total smokescreen and the real action is happening somewhere else. I think that, in a weird way, I think all three are correct. Um, uh, I'm sure this is a smokescreen for things not only in Syria, but, but a lot of other things are happening geopolitically right now, and uh, this does create a convenient distraction. Whenever there's a 24-7 blanket news story, I think it serves our interest to take a look at what we're not being asked to, to look at constantly. Regardless of whether Snowden is a distraction or whatever, at the very least we can use the momentum of a story like this to try to bring people's attention to that bigger picture that we're talking about, the total surveillance that's going on, and why the, the security state has has to be dismantled because uh, it is getting out of control.